In this video, I have a lovely conversation with Alexander Warren about the research that he's done around empathy and paid support workers. And I think you're just gonna love Alexander's take on why it's so important. So Alexander, the reason that I wanted to come and have a chat with you is because I'd read up about this really interesting research that you've done around empathy and support workers or PAs or carers. What interested you and got you involved in this in the first place? I was, I got asked to help do a bit of a project with Gillian from Edinburgh Development Group. And uh, we were asked to, in, we were asked to interview people who get support. We interviewed a lot of people. Some of them were really, really wonderful stories. Some of them weren't. No. And one of them like will stick in my head for a very long time was he said his support worker said he was stupid reading all these medical books because he wouldn't understand them. Mm. And that got me going. Mm. I think we must do something about this. Sorry. So um, that's how it all started from hearing that one very negative story about a support worker. Yeah. Do you think it's something it can teach? Yes. With the research, we have found out empathy can be taught. Okay. Yes. And I think we probably need to go back a step and ex have a discussion about what we think empathy is. Empathy is uh, stepping to somebody else's, stepping to that person's shoes. So you set out on this journey of trying to do some research and what was the question that you were trying to answer with this research? We were trying to achieve to find the answers of good support for, good support, for support workers and how empathy fits into okay. that. Okay, this strikes me as such an important thing for us to address it is. because as somebody who employs support workers for my son, mm -hmm. um, first of all, I want to make sure that he is getting the best support possible but also that I'm helping those support workers to be the best they can be as well. Yes. And, and you believe that empathy is a massive part of that. Oh, yes. Your research was about finding out what the barriers are to people being more empathic. What did you find out there? Well, the barriers were that people didn't take their time because everything's rushed, rushed, rushed. And they, and they don't always look at the they don't always read up about the person either. Okay, so not informing themselves and educating themselves about the individual yes. before they get involved with them. Okay. But also not knowing the parents or the carers. So the family situation that they're, they're working in. Yes. So what solutions do you have for that? I think maybe at least you really have time to sit and listen to each other. Yeah. It's about connecting, listening to each other properly, see how you can resolve it. Yes, having conversations and... Yes. Yeah. The other thing that can affect it is that, um, that they take their, their life outside work and they somehow take that with them into the workplace and then that means they're not going to pro properly concentrate on the job they need to do. Yes, because I think it's we forget sometimes as employers, for those of us who are, that that's the care staff that we're working with have a life outside of their job um, and we need to maybe appreciate that, that they have other concerns going on in their lives as and well. And not just that, but they also have another job as well to go to. That's true. Another story, I, we interviewed a support worker and she was getting upset because she, she wasn't knowing if she was doing a good job or not. Okay, so she wasn't getting the feedback. Yeah either from the person that she's working with or employers that, that what she was doing was right or wrong. Yes. Yeah, and yes. That, that... That's really sad. Yeah, yeah, that is. Who's responsible for feeding back that kind of information? I think it's a bit of everybody. A bit of yeah. everybody. So a bit of the employer, a bit of the person, if they're able to communicate if that. If they're able to communicate, yes. Yes, and maybe the family and care yes. around that person so I think we all need that's something that I can definitely take away from that is this need to be reinforcing to the staff that are working with the people that we love about whether they're doing a good job or not yes because then they know how to adapt the work that they're doing 
For some of us who've never interviewed for a member of staff before, so it's kind of difficult enough trying to think about all the practical questions that you need to ask. How on earth do we identify whether somebody has empathy or not? Well, why don't you ask the question, when was the last, when was the last time you felt you were empathised or you empathise or you empathise with somebody or ask them what they think empathise means to them. Yes. Earlier you were talking about you think that there are some exercises that you can do to help people become more empathic. Yes. What sort of things do you do for that? We get we get party out and we get them to say what does empathy look like to you as not just as a blob but as an image. Oh. And they really take their time on that. And I think it's so lovely to see what they come up with. Gosh, how interesting. So if you had putty in front of you, what would you make it look like? Two people mm -hmm. doing that, holding hand in hand with, uh, with, if I was skilled enough, with the word empathy. Wow, that's lovely. Because I think empathy is more than one person. Empathy needs to be with two or more people. Mm -hmm. Or I would have, uh, like, a ghost image of that person stepping in that person's shoes and vice versa. Mm. So swapping each other's shoes. Yes. Something that just struck me there when you were explaining that is, again, from a kind of employer, carer kind of perspective, is that it's got to be two-way, hasn't it? Yes, yes, it has to be. It can't just be us expecting support staff to be empathic to the person they're working with, yep. we also need to be empathic back? Yes, you do. I think another thing is also really important is that they need to look after themselves, they need to self-care. And also I think the employee also needs to say that to the support worker to check in that they're looking after themselves. Like I love the example we had of like, a uh, support worker, he loves to skateboard, so he goes off and skates board with, by himself or with his girlfriend. Another person is that he, that person likes to go for coffee and just by himself and relax. Self-care is different for everybody, isn't it? Yes. But it's still it really important. It takes so much. Self-care has many forms, but it's important to self-care or you end up going crazy. Mm and not doing a good job afterwards because self-care is just really, really one of the most important things. More about, more, it's more important than money. I know it sounds strange, but if you don't look after yourself, then you can't look after the person you're, help, you're helping to look after. Absolutely, there's a lesson for us all there. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alexandra. It's it was lovely meeting you. And you.